There was a great flute player and, and composer from Tarm and my home place in Leitrim, a man called John McKenna, who went to America in the early 1920s and was one of the first Irish musicians to make recordings in America, traditional uh, musicians to make recordings. And uh, John came back to Ireland later, but in a, in a way almost more importantly, uh, his recordings came back before him and after him. And um, those recordings uh, of McKenna's music in America have inspired a whole new generation of young musicians, not only in Leitrim, but around the country. And um, I suppose it's, it's easy to create heroic stories about people. Um, McKenna was a great musician, uh, but somehow, and I, I never found out why, many local people um, were slightly dismissive, and maybe that was a, maybe there was a strain of jealousy, who knows? Um, but um, I met an old friend, a, a, a miner, an old miner, uh, Tommy Groughton, when I was making a documentary about a strike in the mines in the late 60s. And we talked about all kinds of things. And he told me that he remembered meeting John McKenna on the Black Road, as it was, uh, which goes up the mountain towards the pits, uh, after a sports day, a local sports day, which McKenna had gone to in the hope that somebody would ask him to play a tune. So he was carrying his flute. But nobody asked him to play. And he was very disappointed and downcast going home up the mountain and he met Tommy Groughton who asked him to play a tune and they sat down on the bank and Tommy said that kind of saved the day. Uh, I wrote a poem called McKenna's Tunes which takes that image but also remembers um, Tommy Groughton um, this, who in my childhood was a big, strong, he and his brother Phil Joe, big, big, strong men, worked in the mines, strongest men in the pit. And um, when I went back to see him, he was this small little man uh, with black, black hands, uh, long fingernails from far digging in the ground that he loved. Uh, they were like talons on a bird. And he, he told me, he remembered that strike in the pit in vivid detail. And he was one of the men who broke the strike, and was ostracized in the community, known, they were known as scabs. He'd never talked about it, but he talked about it that time on the recording. And it was astonishing. Um, I'll never forget, it's probably the most remarkable interview I've ever done. And I remember we, at the end of it all, we shook hands three times and he said, I'll be listening to that program in June. And he died two days later. And I can still see him standing outside his lovely stone farmhouse uh, with his shrunken pullover, grey, white, a white kind of gone grey with baubles of colour along the front, blue, red, yellow, green, and his wool trousers and boots and his lovely face. Um, so there, I suppose there's a, a world um, and worlds in this poem, but uh, John McKenna and Tommy Groughton are at the heart of it. McKenna's Tunes the pit man in the mist, a trip to cove, the sanctuary reel, the long island set and carry the buttermilk home. The tunes we'd make if only we had the ear that turned the heart the road for home. Disconsolate of a sports day, no one asks you to play, and heading away up the mountain you meet one man who stops you, saves the hour, asks for a tune, what to play. The collier's reel, what better in this place where years and wheels of time on again, the man as small as he once was big, strong, frail now, rock dust on the lung, 
remembers meeting McKenna on the road and asks him to play. And oh, the glory of it, the birds alight in the bushes, singing to match the man. And music catches time, holds it frail as moth or gable bat, flings it back to life, tosses it up and away. And when the shadows gather in the half-set ruins, flitted under oak and lintel, fiddle, flute and dancing feet shout down the echoed moon, and new rose tune bursts into scent. Owl as white as pit is black and coal flies softly. All is one, all is tune, all is silence, all is nettle, all is fossil stone.